Good morning and welcome to Real Talk with Tamara. I hope that you guys are doing okay this morning. As you come into the room, please hit the like button. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I want you guys to know that I definitely appreciate you guys so much. Um, all of my new subscribers, all of my subscribers that have been here with me from the beginning, all of the ones that have been here for a long time, like even the spectators that are not subscribed, I appreciate you. Um, um, as we, you know, as I work hard to give you good content, as we continuously go up and as we get into a plethora of, of different content, right? Um, we talk a lot about the Young Dolls case on this channel, but of course, as you'll see, we're going to be talking a lot about a lot of different cases. Also, we just kind of watch the Young Dolls case and commentate on it and, um, and have dialogue about it, right? Um, I know a lot of people say, well, you all are, um, you're trying to solve the Young Dolls case. I'm not. Young Dolph does not that, uh, the Young Dolph's case is is one of those cases that Young Dolph has a dream team, and when I say a dream team, he's got the Memphis police homicide investigators, he's got the FBI, and he's got other federal entities. Um, I, there's no that would be you know he he's he's got the experts with all of the resources, and he can't lose. I would never try to insert myself into an investigation uh, with, with that many uh, specialized entities on it and, um, and, and disrupt an, an investigation. Of course, I mean, I, I, could, I couldn't do, I, nobody could disrupt that investigation if they wanted to. Because those people kind of got that investigation on lock. But we do talk a lot about that. But I wanted to talk about it kind of my seg it's my that's my segue into why so many rappers being taken out of here, you know. And I think it's a shame that, you know, we it's an art, you know, it's an art. And rap used to be like cool, you know, whereas R and B gave you a different vibe. Rap used to give you this real cool vibe, you know. You was um, you was kind of clever with your words, and you know, people just loved it. It just had you up grooving, you know. Um, and even when they started, when they started incorporating, because I get to thinking about when they started incorporating gangster rap, when they started having, I think it was N.W.A. F the police, F the police, you know, um. They started allowing them to incorporate that back in the really the early 90s because um this was what we see now where where people are so disruptive that I, I believe you know they start getting uh people start to get so out of hand that they have no choice. I'm talking about the government have no choice but to just start gunning down disruptive people, right? Um, that, that when there's no order, and at this point, it seems to me that there is it, it, no, there is no order, even on the outside of rap, right? So, um, but you look at rap, <clears throat> where 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 you have a lot of young men and women that are talented, and they are supposed to be making money. Okay, well, it's so grimy because instead of allowing them to make money, they have taken, it's turned into something even more sadistic, right? Um, you know, you have these, these label heads. Now, a lot of them look at themselves as masters, you know, even though you got the talent, even though you're signed, you won't make money unless you go out and do my dirty work for me or something like that. You know, you have to, you, you, you have to be, not grimy as far as the work ethic, because if it was that, that would be fine. Because back in the day, all you really heard was artists talk about how tired they was because of the work ethic. Now in rap, you know, because of constantly uh, working and going and traveling, no sleep, 
um, practicing, constantly writing, staying in the studio. But now it's something more, just more sinister and sadistic. It's about putting in work. Like when you see when Soldier Boy gets upset, he'll talk about who want a deal. You got to be able to put in work, though. He'll put that money on the table <laughs> or put that bag on top of his head. You see what I mean? Like it has really turned into something even more sadistic. And believe it or not, when Soldier Boy first came out, Soldier Boy was not that dark. My children grew up on on Crank That Soldier Boy. It, he he was not. We all love Soldier Boy. He his his eyes don't even look the same. Like I think a lot of too, a lot of it has to do with with drugs too. I say that you see a lot of people are on this lean, which is liquid heroin that is really frying away at their brain, their their organs, especially their kidneys. Um. Uh, they just flat out on all kinds of meth, crack, coke, anything, anything that they can snort, as they say, or smoke. Okay, anything that they can snort or smoke, and so it's 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 leading to, I think, it's causing so many of them to be barbaric. You know, um, especially in that industry. And I think that it is promoted so that the people, because they're actually supposed to make a lot of money if they're good. <clears throat> you know, and most of most of, uh, most of these rappers are are very talented. So I think a strategy of the record heads and things of that nature is to promote violence and to keep them on on some type of narcotic so that they can control them. I'm thinking about back in the day when um, Lil Wayne and and, and um, BG and all of them was on cash money. And I remember BG when he got mad, you know, because uh, BG was on, that was before heroin even hit the black community in Memphis. Because heroin, when they was, you know, the black people was on heroin down in New Orleans. I was like, my God, you know, you know, heroin was basically used by, by Caucasians, right? Back in that time. And so um, BG was like, you know, they kept me, um, they kept feeding my habit because they always wanted me to stay under the influence so that they could steal from me. You know, um, he thought getting a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars from time to time was good. Number one, because he was on drugs. And number two is because it was more money than he had ever had. Okay. Um, they was kind of vocal about it. I'm glad, you know, because, you know, now record heads feel like record labels feel like if you start talking, then, you know, it's time to be whacked. Baby, I have to give it to him. He didn't whack him. You know, because now you're seeing record heads putting hits on their artists, they ain't even got to say nothing. All they got to do is open their eyes and say, well, look here. Can we renegotiate that contract when my contract ends? That's if it ever ends. Some of these folks letting these folks put them in lifelong contracts with astronomical insurance. And you're worth more dead than alive. And that is going on, okay? But if they open their eyes, okay, that nigga right there a problem, okay? If they think they're going to go somewhere else and make some money or start their own thing, or I'll get the insurance money off of them. Damn, it's a human and they got a family and, you know, they want to be all they can be just like these other record labels and heads want to be all they can be. We're just going to take them out. And then, too, they're, they're signing gang members because they want to promote beef. So a lot of these record heads are strategically... They've gotten together. You sign this one. I'm going to sign that one. They're ops. And we get them to beef hell. They got insurance on. They wouldn't give a damn if they die. If it end in death, you know, you get your insurance. Um, the other one, you know, we, 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 you know, the other one goes to jail. Hell, the other record company owns all of his masters and stuff. He's going to get just as much because for some reason, the mindset of human beings, they like garbage. They like junk. And then I'm talking about just regular old people. 
that claim, you know, that they want peace, but they like a lot of chaotic garbage. And so when whenever there's chaos and beef, instead of not entertaining it and saying, we're not going to, mm -mm, if it's got to be like that, that's too dark, that's too sadistic. They run straight to it and wonder why they life upside down. They're on all kinds of meds, mental meds, because they like chaos. They like darkness. Whereas if we didn't entertain that, the record industry would be forced to put out a different type of music. But as long as you're allowing your children to stream this stuff and some of these, you know, you listen to some of these kids. Yeah, I'm gonna murder you. Yeah, I'm gonna break into your house and 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 rape your mama and, and your little baby. Instead of the mama saying, what the hell are you listening to? Or the dad, man, turn that off, man. You look at them, they head bopping too, all in the car, the car bouncing. Just what do these kids have to look up to? Just pathetic. Okay, yeah, I'm raping mamas, and they put that into the atmosphere. I remember a time you couldn't even talk about rape on no music, you couldn't put that into the atmosphere. Now it is put into the atmosphere, and, and because a lot of the, the younger generation is misguided and lost, they think that that's okay. And what the what the record industry is doing, they wouldn't give a damn, even some of them black ones that they have given the illusion of that they have um power because they don't they just use them to escort this stuff into the black community and it's a damn shame before god that regardless to what hood you came out of you heard a lot of these rappers that that they have given the illusion of power like jay-z and puffy and all of them talk about where they came from and you know it was less than good conditions it was actually terrible and then you could rise with the help of the black community and then uh, do what they are doing, right? And then do what they're doing, which is sending um, uh, you, the people in the back rooms, because Jay-Z and them are, are financed by somebody. They make y'all think that they got the power, but they actually are being controlled. So the people that we don't see that don't look like us is actually the ones that's putting the bug in their ear and they send it down and they are so money hungry and power they want the illusion of power you know um they don't have an issue with what with what they do as far as uh telling these uh young men that get into rap you need to go do hits you need to uh you need to beef and strategically um getting with different record labels and saying i'm gonna sign this and use i'm gonna sign the op and we get them to beef and that's how you know, we're going to run it up, you know, as they say. And then it always ends up, somebody always end up being taken out or, and, and the other one put in jail for life. So, you know, I, 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 that's, that's, that's one of, that's a couple of the reasons. It's a lot of other reasons. Okay. It's a lot of other reasons, but those are a few of them. And I think that, you know, that it's just, it's sad because we're, we're losing so many uh, uh, African-American men and women before they even reach the age of 25, let alone 30, before they ever even reach the age of 25. So, you know, I just, I think that it's sad. I, I do. But those are a few of the reasons. And this is my segue into a lot of cash desto. You know, I, I haven't said a lot about a lot of cash desto. I didn't, I didn't know a lot about her music. You know, I, I actually got up and I listened to some of it the other day and I um, I was listening to some this morning. I was looking at her interview and she seemed to be a, a laid back uh, young lady. You know, um, I, I think that it is a shame uh, that she lost her life. I don't know what is going on when children and I look at her as a child. OK. Cause I'm in my early forties going in, into my mid forties. Okay. So I look at her as a, a child. Um, I, I, I have a daughter that's a year younger than her. Okay. And it is very disturbing to see um, not only that they don't care about taking out the young men, they're also killing women. You know, this was a young woman, and I normally don't like speaking on on children, um, 
and young young adults because like i said i consider them children when they lose their lives in such a heinous way but i i just i think that it's sad on on so many levels i think i found something that i kind of want to show as it relates to a lot of cash desto um I think this is it. Assistant Chief Wyatt Martin of the Houston Police Department. Uh, at approximately 2.39 a.m. this morning, uh, officers received a call regarding the shooting at the 5500 block of Richmond Avenue. Approximately two minutes later, when officers arrived on the scene, they located a vehicle stopped facing westbound in the 5500 block with two occupants, both females who had been struck by gunfire. Uh, one of those females was transported to the hospital with apparent non-life-threatening injuries. The other, unfortunately, had scum her wounds and was deceased at the scene. Uh, a third victim was located by during the incident and was struck by gunfire. Uh, at this time, we do not have any suspects. Uh, we do not have any description of suspects. There are several witnesses who are being talked to about on the side, but additional information we hope will come forward as this incident goes on. Uh, we would ask the public if you know anything about what happened out here, about this incident, the suspects, or have any additional information, please contact the Houston Police Department on the side of the division. We described the vehicle on the holes in window sides or part of the vehicle. Yes, the vehicle was struck multiple times by gunfire, uh, and the driver was struck at least once and was deceased. The passenger was transported to the hospital. Was this from the back of the vehicle or the side of the vehicle? It appears it was shot from both directions. So this could be a road rage, or we just don't know? We don't have any information about motive at this time. It could be road rage, could have been a robbery. Uh, we just don't know it. We don't have enough information at this time. To <laughs> okay. So now we're learning that it was it was a robbery. I, I do believe they're saying that it was a robbery. Um, it's unfortunate that that happened. Um, you know, there were also reports that she may have gotten some shots off. You know, I don't I don't know, because just listening to him, he was saying that there were shots coming from both ways. Um, they shot into the car, you know. Um, so I I want to say, you know, rest in rest in peace to her. You know, my condolences to her family, you know, because she was a, a young lady. You know, I was looking at a, her um her picture her her picture when she was a little girl she was a cute little baby you know um i didn't know her like i said i didn't know her um i know um i'm hearing she was from around the orange mound area i'm very you know familiar with the orange mound area of course so it's sad but anyways they were saying that she was laid to rest and i know that's not an easy thing but you know now we're taking women out, you know, just um, barbaric. Um, even if it was a robbery, you want to take our stuff? We killing people for their things, okay? And I know that was when it first happened. That was the night that it happened. They were still trying to collect information. It was still developing, and I think more has come out now. Like I said, I heard somebody say that it was a robbery and allegedly she may have gotten some shots back off. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I would have to look into that more. But at any rate, it is it is is a tragedy. It is a tragedy um, that especially so many rappers, it's like there is. It's something going on, you know, because I, I get to thinking about P&B rock. Then you know 
it's like if you see them shining, take them out, rob them and take them out. I cannot get past that PNB Rock situation where the father and the son walked into a public place with people in there and robbed, tried to rob and kill that young man. You know, um, all of this extortion, you got to check in. Hell, that's extortion. I've been saying that. You know, and so if you don't check in, that's a problem. Uh, they'll say it's disrespect. No, you 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 need to pay us. You can't be in. In other words, you can't be in my city without paying me, as if you own the damn city. Okay. And so you know whatever is going on as far as underground with the government, as it relates to some of these record heads, some of these these rappers and these gangs. Um, because they are the ones that are actively destroying um, our communities. I can't wait until there is something to bust it up, probably a Rico or something, you know, um, because it's a damn shame that you can't be great. Everybody want a piece of what you work hard for. I once heard somebody say, as hard as you work, I believe it was Dr. Dre. For your money, there's always somebody working just as hard to try and take it from you. And he wasn't lying when they could put that energy into trying to build something for themselves. But that is the energy that is put into the atmosphere. If I, if you got it, I'm going to take it from you. That's the energy that's being spoken out into the atmosphere as it relates to a lot of this drill music. And because a lot of these people, these, these people and some of these old crusty niggas too, I can't put it on all the younger people because you got a lot of old, crusty Negroes in their 40s and 50s and stuff. They just as ignorant. They don't even have to control themselves. They pathetic. So what do what kind of examples do these kids, these younger kids have to look up to? Okay, they saying, hell, I, I, I'm looking at this old, crazy MF, stupid ignorant. As long as I ain't acting as bad as him, I'll be bad. I just won't be crazy bad. Because there is a lot of mental illness. Whatever kind of crack a lot of these people on, it, whatever their they kind of drugs that is out there is it's messing with them. When they do get off of it, they have mental illnesses. And they don't even know it. But y'all, you know, I just, I wanted to talk about that. Why so many um, rappers are being taken out. It is because... To sum it all up, it is engineered. This is what they want. You heard what Minister Farrakhan said back in when then they took him off. Of, they banned him from national TV because they didn't want him putting that into the atmosphere. These record, the, the private prisons met with these record execs. And they get these cuckabug heads that they give the illusion of power because they ain't got no power. They being financed by a lot of these billionaire record companies who also get funding from these billionaires that's building these private prisons they work together and they get black people and put black faces in front of us to make us think or them think that they got power and tell the kids this is who you want to be or look up to okay and they kind of bamboozle uh, the black community, those who don't know any better and to thinking this is success and this is what you got to do. You got to rob, steal and kill so that the private prisons can be filled up and the record execs can get insurance policies. OK, that's what's going on. And it's and it's sad. OK, but anyways, you guys, I'm going to get off of here. Um, I'm going to chill out at home today because I've been working a lot. So I'm going to take me a day. So I probably I'll be putting up more videos, but I want you guys to like, share and subscribe, okay? I'll talk with you later.